Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan for Lawn Fawn, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I quickly and easily put together the Winter Yeti. The secret to doing this is the Lawn Fawn double-sided adhesive sheets. So I'm going to take out a piece of that sheet and I also have some 80 pound white cardstock. I trimmed it down to be just a little bit bigger than the base of my Yeti. And then I'm going to remove just one of the backing sheets on that double-sided adhesive and place that over the top of my cardstock. So once I press this down real firmly, I'm going to take my Yeti, the base piece of the Yeti, place it over the top. So this is the side that has that rest of the double-sided adhesive, and I'm going to die cut the base of the Yeti from that. The cardstock colors I'm using for the rest of my Yeti is Moonstone Ballet Slippers, white and black. So I'm going to take the outline of the Yeti and die cut it from each of those colors of cardstock. I separated out all the pieces that I'm going to use and the rest I just kind of put off on the side. Now for the Yeti with the double-sided adhesive on it, I took a little bit of repositionable tape, I placed it on the back of that base piece and attached it to white cardstock just so it's going to hold it in place and I have somewhere to kind of put my fingers where it's not going to stick. I had removed the release paper and then I could start bringing in all my pieces of the Yeti and it's going to stick immediately. So you don't need to worry about liquid glue or anything like that. It's just really quick and easy to use the double-sided adhesive sheets. I have black for the outlines, the pink cardstock for the ears, and then I did the moonstone for the face and the hands. Now that my Yeti is done, I'm just gonna place it off on the side and work on building up my scene. I'm starting with 80 pound white cardstock and die cutting out the stitched mountains from that. I'm going to use that as a guide for my snowy hills. I have the stitched hillside border. I kind of lined it up over my mountains to figure out how high I wanted that first set of hills to be. And then I just kind of moved it over to my white cardstock and trimmed it out. Then I took that white cardstock and I just flipped it to use the other side and I'm going to create a smaller hill. So it's really helpful to have your kind of scene off on one side and your plain cardstock off on the other so you can just shift your borders over and then everything is going to line up perfectly. I'm taking four of the mini snowflakes and I'm going to die cut it out of pixie dust cardstock and I'm also going to die cut them out of 80 pound white cardstock too because I'm going to be layering it together to add dimension to the snowflakes. To fill in my scene a little bit, I'm grabbing these two trees which is off of the Winter Skies stamp set. I have 80 pound white cardstock and I'm going to stamp these in the jet black ink which is alcohol marker friendly. I clean them off repositioned them and stamped them two more times so I have a nice grouping of trees. I'll be using my Olo markers to color in my trees and whenever I do these trees I like to flip my trees so that they're upside down and then what I do is I start with the darkest color at the top of the tree and I start adding flicks. Now I am experimenting a little bit with my Olo markers and I started out by putting the lightest color down first. I felt that was just easier to blend on the 80 pound white cardstock and then came in and add flicks with the remaining colors. I also have a light brown and a dark brown that I'm adding to the tree trunks. I'll then take the coordinating die, hold them down with a low tack tape and die cut out all of my trees. To create my winter background, I'm going to be using Distress Oxide inks. I'm starting with the mountains and this is a tumble glass Distress Oxide. So I'm starting at the very top of the mountains and I'm going to just lightly blend down towards the bottom. Most of the bottom part of my mountain is going to be covered up with the hills so I don't need to go down very far. Then I'm gonna come in with Shaded Lilac. And I'm also keeping in mind that I'm going to be adding uh, the top part of the mountains to it. So I'm going to take the Shaded Lilac, go down right to where about the point is on the mountains and then come back in and add just a little bit more of that tumble glass. I'm also going to use that tumble glass on my uh, snowy hills. So instead of adding blue to the top of the hills, I'm actually going to start at the bottom. And what I'll do is blend it up so it's going to be just below the stitched line. So I'm going to have a little bit of white there on the top where my hillside is. And then it's going to have this really nice soft glowing blue towards the bottom. I'll do the same thing with my shorter hillside here, taking that tumble glass and just blending from the bottom, going up towards the hill and then have it kind of fade off. 
Then after I have my hills done, I can use the tumble glass to also create the background or my sky. So I use the mountains to kind of just uh, as a guide on how high I need to go or where I need to start ink blending. Once again, most of the bottom portion of the card is going to be covered up, so I don't need to waste my ink down there. I'm placing the tumble glass kind of right in the center and working out towards the edges. Then I'm going to come in with a blueprint sketch. This one, I will go all the way around the side and the top edges of the card, and I'm going to blend into the tumble glass. This one, you may need to go back and forth between the two colors a little bit, depending on the intensity that you want. So by coming back in with the tumble glass, it's going to help smooth out that transition. I can always bring my mountains back in and look at it and see if I have enough of a glow, if I need to shift my glow over a little bit. I'm happy with where it's at, so I'm going to work on the assembly. These are the snow caps that I'm going to add to the top of the mountains, just using my tweezers and liquid glue. It cuts out three, or there's three of them you can cut out from white cardstock or pixie dust cardstock would be really pretty too. This one I'm going to add to the right hand side. It's going to hang off of the edge. So what I'll do is take my scissors. I'm going to trim off that excess and then take that piece and add it to the other side of the card. So I didn't need to die cut any other snow caps. And then earlier I had mentioned when I die cut out my mini snowflakes, I also die cut them out of white cardstock. This was 80 pound as well. And the reason I did that is I wanted to give them a little bit of lift and dimension from, from the background once I attach them. So I'm going to add a little dots of glue all around the back of the snowflake that's cut from pixie dust and then add it over the cardstock snowflake that I die cut. So it'll give it just that little bit of a lift. Since these are pretty tiny, it would be almost impossible to add foam squares behind them. And I like to use my tweezers to kind of keep my fingers out of the way. I don't get as much glue all over the place this way. I'll then take my snowy hills and I'm going to add some tape runner behind them. I'm starting with the one that's going to go on the furthest back. Now, none of the hills I'm going to pop up because I do plan on adding dimension with foam squares to some of my trees and the Yeti. So I will just add tape runner to the back of these hills, line them up with the bottom edge of my mountains and just press that down. For the ink blended background, I wanted to heat emboss on it. So since I did quite a bit of ink blending here, I'm going to dry that with my heat tool. You wanna to make sure it's completely dry if you're gonna do your heat embossing after your ink blending. To test that out, I take some embossing powder, just sprinkle it over the background. Now, if the embossing powder falls off, then that means it's dry. If it sticks, then that means that the ink is still wet. Here I'm using the Merry Messages stamp set. I'm going to line it up onto my background. I did bring in the mountains to make sure that my message or my sentiment is going to be high enough up. Then I'm going to pick that up with the door of the Misty, do uh, some anti-static powder over my background, and then ink up my sentiment in the Yeti pigment ink, just gently applying pressure. You don't want to squish your letters because that would distort the message. And then I can sprinkle on my white embossing powder and tap off any excess back into my container. Next, I'll bring in my heat tool, make sure that's really nice and hot when I come to my project and melt the embossing powder. And this is going to give me a really nice bright white sentiment. I'm also going to add some white splatters to my background and I'm taking just the sticky part of a post-it note and placing it over my sentiment. And then I'm bringing in some white paint that I have mixed with some water and flicking that all over the background. Now, most likely the embossing would probably resist this and I could wipe it away, but I like to try and keep that area as clean as I can. Now, once that background is dry, I can just attach my mountains, that piece that I had already created, just using my tape runner. And then I can start filling in my scene. So I'm placing everything about where I would want it to go. I have three snowflakes there that are going to be in the actual sky. The other snowflake, my Yeti is going to be holding. And I'm just using a little bit of the liquid glue. I have a couple of them that are going to hang off the edge of the card and I will trim the excess off a little later on. My Yeti, I'm going to add some white foam squares too. And then I'll start working on placement of my trees. The smaller trees I wanna kinda of have more in the background because they would be smaller in perspective. So I'm going to arrange them going around my Yeti so it's like he's walking through a forest. And then as I go, the ones in the furthest back are going to be attached with a tape runner. And the trees more towards the front of the card, I will be putting some foam squares on. So here I'll just add my tape runner to the back. A couple of them I put and tuck behind my hill. 
I can go ahead and, and remove the backing of the foam squares from my Yeti. I was pretty confident where he was going to go and I can just fill in the scene around him with all of those trees. Here I'm just adding a couple foam squares to the back of those trees and I can place them on the front of my card. I do have one snowflake that I want to add to my Yeti's hand and I'm going to add a li little bit of the liquid glue to just one of the edges of the snowflake but my Yeti is popped up so I decided I wanted to pop up my snowflake a little bit. I trimmed out a very very tiny square from my foam squares added it to the center of my snowflake so that way it doesn't get flattened or squished if I put this in an envelope and mail it. Then one of the finishing touches that I'm going to do is take a white jelly roll pen. I think this is a size 10 and I'm going to add some highlights to the sides of my tree. I'm also going to take some clear sparkle embellishments and add them to the centers of my snowflake just using a wax tip pickup tool and my liquid glue. And then that will finish off my card project. I really had fun creating this wintry scene and using those double-sided adhesive sheets to assemble the Yeti made this so easy to do. I hope you enjoyed today's card inspiration and thank you so much for joining us.